Yay. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Natalie Cutler Welsh here. And welcome back to another episode. This is the Up Your Brave live stream. It's something I started during lockdown, but the crazy thing is I was going to do it as a bunch of live events. And then, you know, life happened, situations changed. And what do we do? We tweak, we pivot. But I'm super excited to bring you all these amazing guests. And uh, today we're going to be diving deep into the topic of what I call keeping the love alive. Uh, it's a phrase I've been using for years. I actually wrote about it in my book. Um, it was actually the reason I wrote my book because I re really was the one going, no one told me it was going to be so hard to have a thriving marriage when children are added to the equation. So we're going to dive into that today and a lot more with my fabulous guests. So let's bring them in. Here they are looking so good. So we have Biddy Jackson. Hello. Hi, Bridget. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Hi, everybody. Thanks good. for joining us today. We have Vainan Jacobs. Hello, Vainan. How's things? Hey, good day, everyone. Great to be on the stream today. Yeah, and over there in the nature, we have Nikki Rhodes. Hey, Nikki. Hey. Awesome yeah, I'm so, you. so thrilled to bring you guys all together and to, to tackle this topic, which, you know, at the best of times, I think, love isn't easy. You know, it's worth it, but it, it's work, right? So <laughs> I'm super you. excited to hear your guys' insights, your tips. And for those of you watching, for those of you that are joining us live or watching the replay, first of all, I always would love to know where you're watching from. So go ahead and comment. Let us know geographically where you're watching from. And um, maybe one word, if you're game, to describe you know, relationships, like, you know, what is one where I would say they are, yeah, they're, they're, um, they're, it's a journey. It's a journey for sure. So maybe share your word for us with what you think about, you know, relationships in general. All right. So Brigitte, I'm going to go to you first. So you and I have been friends for a couple of years. I know that uh, you've got two businesses, you've got your equal X's business. What I love about what you do is you basically take care of things for people, because I know that when people are separating, it's stressful and it can be really expensive and all the things. And I know you've walked that path yourself and now you're basically sharing your insights with people. So if you can elaborate on my little intro, tell us a little bit about you and then take us to tip number one. Sure, okay. Well, yes, I set up Equalexes um, about 18 months ago, focusing on divorce and separation and helping people through their journeys as, as you've just talked about, Natalie. And I decided, well, actually, I want to go further. I want to actually train as a um, relationship coach and a grief coach because I think oh, it's really important that people do everything they possibly can in terms of their marriage or their relationship before they end up actually going down the divorce and separation route, okay? So my first tip today is, particularly that we're all in lockdown together at the moment, is that do something that kicks up your adrenaline and your arousal for each other, okay? Oh, so yeah. obviously, yeah, wow. So now we're in, we're in level 3.9. You can go on a vigorous hike together. Um, you can't go on a roller coaster ride and you can't go and do a parachute jump out of a plane. But um, you can watch a scary movie together, um, which is also an arousing, generating activity. But one idea that I think that everyone should give it a go if they've got a gym at home or some workout gear is actually work out together. And because you know that that'll get the, that'll get the endorphins going and you'll both feel better about your bodies and, and you'll feel aroused. And, you, you know, um, you might even, you know, in the middle of your session, make love in the middle of your workout. Who knows? <laughs> children aren't watching but um you know i suggest that you yeah after after you finish listening to us go to your home gym whether it's indoors or outdoors it's actually quite nice weather here in auckland and do some workouts together and um you never know where that might lead Ooh, very enticing i like that you've just taken us there on tip number one that's good i'm sure we're going to have more where that came from um no that is a good tip and uh, you know one of the things for us i found in level or, or is that we don't have a 14 year old and I'm such a rule follower that I'm like oh we couldn't possibly go for a walk together because then people would know that we're not known with the kids because where else would they be so um yeah exactly you can still do your thing in the home gym nice Nice. Um, all right, so we've got people watching from Omaha, Ashburton, and someone from Ashburton saying um, effort. So, um, and then we've also got someone saying constant learnings. So you guys, just so you know, I use this app called StreamYard. I'm actually live streaming it to four different Facebook pages that I've got and my YouTube channel. But here's the crazy thing with StreamYard. 
I've got one, a private group that, um, and, and when they're, when it's streaming to a group, it doesn't tell me your name. So thank you so much for commenting. I can literally not see your name because I guess you guys are probably in my private group, but thank you for joining us today. All right, Vaynan, we're going to go to you. Now, what I love is that Vaynan and I, we connected via LinkedIn. I'm pretty sure you reached out to me. You can tell the story possibly better than I can, but we ended up meeting at a cafe. Um, that's what I miss with lockdown, my business catch-ups in the cafe. I really miss them. So we met up and we really connected. It was awesome. And we were vibing about marriage and relationships. And, and I love the work that you're doing. I know you work with Family Life and Zed, but you've also got your own things on the go and a young child at home. So give us a little bit of backstory about you and then diving into tip one. Yeah, great. And I think that's where one of the things we had in common, I think uh, your son, his name is also Jonah. Wow. And my little Jonah is now just 14 months old. So navigating that parenting journey. Uh, and yeah, prior to, to us actually meeting, I can recall a number of people in the sort of speaking circles I was involved in telling me about, hey, you should meet Natalie. You should talk to Natalie because I believe we at one stage had a mission to save a million marriages or something. Can you remind us about that? You know, a few years ago, maybe three years ago, I was like, I'm on a mission to save yep. a million marriages. And I really thought, wow, that's interesting because I'm the go-to girl. I'm a business mentor and I want to save marriages. And it comes back to, again, the, my background in podcasting and, and authoring in the parenting realm. But I've actually, you know, it's a journey as well. I've come to the point where I'm like, I don't actually want to save anybody anymore. I want to empower people to yep. have a thriving relationship um, or not, like sometimes the best thing you can do for a relationship is walk your separate ways, which I'm sure we'll talk about as well. Um, but yeah, I did used to want to save a million marriages. Now I want people to just save their bloody own. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome. And I think in this journey and in this conversation, what we really want to do is empower people. Um, and so so that inspires me, I guess, um, as a life and relationship coach. Um, used to be a life and executive coach, but then most of my work actually turned to the relationship side. So mm -hmm. I quite enjoy that. Uh, that led down the journey of uh, authoring a book as well, uh, which is called Connection, a Journey Towards Intimacy. And um, my tip for today, well, maybe just one more thing I'd add there. So today, uh, if, if you haven't picked up from the accent, originally from South Africa, uh, but since moving to New Zealand three years ago, uh, last year I joined with an organization called Family Life. And uh, We've been at it equipping couples to stay married and, you know, equipping them with practical tools for 25 years in New Zealand. Uh, and so I joined as the executive director last year. So that's what I get to do now mm -hmm. every day. Uh, so I enjoy that. My tip for the audience today is how about taking out some cold heart insurance? Okay. So the way I describe that, uh, if you think about your car, uh, it's say say you have a twenty thousand dollar car. You pay on average say a hundred dollars a month on insurance, maybe less. Um, the amount you pay on insurance is much less than the amount you get to withdraw if your car is stolen or if you used to if you would lose that um, asset. So think about your relationship. Okay, the idea of insurance is you make small deposits mm -hmm. for the time a need comes up that you can make a withdrawal. And that withdrawal is usually of a greater value than the small deposits you've made in. Okay, so that's the concept of insurance, okay? So how is it practical in marriage? Well, our brains are actually wired to remember the negative things. And I can sure you mm. can probably hear my son Jonah going on in the background there, yeah. uh, just crying away. No, we can't hear him. <laughs> oh, okay, well, good, good, good on you. Lucky you. I can hear him. <laughs> Our brains are actually wired to remember the negative. So what a relationship insurance does, uh, it's just a system, and you can use any system really to write down the positive things about your relationship. So write down your key moments, write down some of those uh, highlight events, you know, take a picture, save all your pictures, save all your memories in a bank. Uh, you can mm. maybe create an email address and you email yourself on memorable occasions. You can keep, um, I've got this great app on my phone. It's called a vision board. So you just put the app on your phone. You put a picture in there. You put a quote you want to remember. And then you can actually cycle through those pictures, your highlight reel, if you will. And that just warms up your heart, 
reinforces those memories because mm. if we don't actively reinforce them, we tend to gravitate towards what's wrong and what's negative. So instead of growing cold, take out some cold heart insurance and warm up the, the love. Love it. I think that's so good. You know, it's like, it's the classic, um, I play this nighttime game with one of my, my kids and it's, you know, what went well, what went well today, really honing in on the good stuff. And I think you're right. If we don't hone in on the good stuff, we're just going to laser focus on all the, all the other stuff, yeah, which is not true. healthy. We've got a couple comments saying, good to see you, Linda from Bay of Plenty. And someone else saying they've been with their best friend for 35 years, uh, which is amazing. And hard work pays off. Yes. The other thing I'd love for those watching, again, I know there's so much knowledge in the room. When I bring in my guest experts, I also am aware that everyone's got something to share. So go ahead and share with us one of your top tips for sure for um, for keeping the love alive as well. All right, we're going to go to Nikki. So I vividly remember the moment that I met <laughs> Nikki. So, I don't know if she remembers. We were at this retreat thing, well, a, day, a workshop with Basha. And we walk in and we're all standing in this circle. And for me, it's a little bit out of my comfort zone, quite woo-woo. I am very woo-woo, but conservative woo-woo. And anyway, and I look over and I see Nikki there. <laughs> <laughs> and Franco and they're just like so entwined and so like connected and if anyone has followed Nikki on Instagram you can look up Spirit Festival or Spirit um, Spirit Festival NZ and I always say to people oh, look up Nikki on Instagram but prepare yourself like literally prepare yourself <laughs> um, it's amazing so anyway I saw them and Nikki I don't know if you know this but you know what what went through my mind when I saw you guys looking so entwined and connected this is so bad I was like they don't have kids. <laughs> so that's interesting. So I do want to dive into all the things that that brings up for everybody, which is interesting about, you know, perceptions and judgments and, and relationships. Um, so Nikki, if you can elaborate, you you do amazing work. You ran the Massive Spirit Festival. I know you had so many speaking or, um, gigs lined up and tons of travel, which of course has been thrown into the, the abyss a little bit with COVID. If you can elaborate on your intro and then share your tip. Yes, for sure. First of all, I was super excited to be outside in nature and I'm literally blown away every now and then. So if this happens, I'm sorry, I'll just correct myself. <laughs> but I have a house full of children. And like what Natalie said, yes, I have a lot of children. Um, together, we have five daughters, Franco and I. I have three girls and he has two daughters. And um, basically my work, uh, I, I found myself going down two paths. So one of them was the business path, creating these large scale events for the conscious community. I mean, the, la the latest Spirit Fest, we had 150 speakers speaking on everything from the woo-woo, spiritual, um, uh, yoga, meditation, to baby loss, to tapping into your biological potential, to uh, ancient wisdom of all sorts. And um, these are deeply inspiring, awesome places to, to be. And they take a year's worth of, um, of work to create and plan. But at the same time, um, my degrees and my study all really focused in my own personal journey through separation of a very long, very beautiful marriage and mm -hmm. a parting in a, in a really amicable, um, uh, a, a really a amicable, timely manner, I believe. And, and my study all led me into this focus on sex, on intimacy, and retaining that passion, retaining that fire, no matter what scale of business you're doing, no matter what your house looks like or how much Lego is on your floor uh, with all the children. And so balancing these two things, you know, it became a real focus of mine. And so my work with couples, with men, with women, with singles, with teenage girls just emerging, with older women wanting to feel juicy and passionate, like all sorts, you know, it all comes back to the same thing, which is, um, which is looking at sex and intimacy with oneself as kind of like a microcosm for how it goes on, or so for what's going on in your wider life. So yes, that's what I do. Sex and intimacy coach as well as business. Now everyone's going to want to know your Instagram handle so they can go check it out. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice oh, come on, Natalie. That was a big step for me. You know, like I was, a, I'm, I'm first of all a university lecturer. I lectured at Auckland University in the Greek and Roman 
uh, well, my de degrees in Greek and Roman studies, but at the med school teaching conceptions of health and well-being in ancient Greece and Rome. And so I wore the, the shirt and the skirt and like would show up and teach and then come home. And I was like, oh, come on. And then I was a school teacher. I thought being a school teacher would be more enlightening and more sort of connecting. Um, so I've done I've done this way. And then Instagram's just ruined all of that for me because there's no way I, you know anyone would hire me like that again, which I'm kind of happy about because it's, it's living a purpose. It's standing up for the feminine, I feel, in ways that are very edgy. Um, and standing up also for divine union and healthy sex life, not being something you've got to hush hush away or use pseudonyms to pretend, but something anyone can embrace. And Franco and I, we, we don't hide from that. Our conversations around the dinner are very open with the children. Our, my nana knows my Instagram handle. My nana <laughs> saw me in Woman's Day, you know? This is part of it, I think. But it's Nikki Rhodes, so at underscore Nikki Rhodes underscore. Yeah, I'll come back to you for your tip. I just want to jump in. What I'm loving, and I think most people will probably find this, sometimes in life we don't really know where we're going, but when we look back, we're like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That makes sense. And that's why I love doing this because I always learn more about my guests, even though I know them already. And the fact about, I knew that you did some lecturing, but you know, university lecturer, teacher, you know, but when you look back, it's like, of course, Roman and Greek, like yeah. completely. And that's all and it's you probably brought it into what all of those sure. things what you're doing now. But now it just feels like it's so that's where you were meant to end up. I just find life so fascinating. Okay, take us to tip number one. Okay, straight to the tip. So my tip is check your expectations. Mm -hmm. And this has been a very, very big one throughout every corner of my journey, throughout my journey as a mother, right? Yeah. throughout you know are they are they learning five languages because they're five so they should be bilingual it's time right are they playing the cello because they're two and they need to be able like the, the expectations that I had at certain parts of my life were, were, were running me to the ground yeah. check your expectations about how much sex they look like they're having on Instagram and how much sex they're actually having <laughs> check, your, check your expectation like I read this thing and, and men are really meant to know all the different erogenous zones and my man doesn't so I'm kind of pushing him away or distant if there is any way to find to sort of internally resource yourself so filling up your own cup through checking your expectations the expectations will start to drop down so by meeting your own needs as much as you can, or by being aware of the ways in which you see holes around the place rather mm. than, you know, abundance. Yeah, that's my tip. Yeah, completely, exactly. Um, that is so that. good. And I love, um, I love hearing, you know, all of your guys' insights as well. So Biddy, I'm gonna go back to you. Oh, somebody says communicate. Of course, we know about communicating, but it's, it's hard, <laughs> isn't it? It's actually hard to, Communicate is a big word. There's different ways to do it. There's the body language and the, the language, you know, the uh, sometimes people lapse into passive aggressive and, and all the interesting things. One of the tips I'll share actually is, um, you guys know I love my essential oils, but part of that really is, my tip is process your emotions before they process you. So what I found, you know, in my 15 year journey working with people um, is that a lot of people, some people will be in what I call the frustration zone. So they'll be like really frustrated, but maybe because their personality type is more amiable, they won't say anything. So they'll put on the happy face, but inside they're like burning and, and angry and bitter and resentful. And so what happens is health wise, that turns into problems um, and they're not actually saying what they want. So one of the tools, and this is good also uh, for you, Biddy, as well. I call this the bedroom blend as well, which is a combination of a couple of different oils. <laughs> <laughs> including... <laughs> Good for all of us. Come no, on. She's talking about, you know. Um, arousal, okay, arousal. Oh, I got up. Well, we won't get started. We've got like <laughs> passion, whisper, elevation. Anyway, my point is, so on one hand, you know, using it to get in the zone, if that's what you want to do, but also processing our emotions before the emotions process us. Because in relationships, there's sometimes, like I mentioned, the frustration zone, anger, but there's also the disconnected zone and the should zone. So the should is like, he should be more helpful. He should know what I'm thinking or whatever. So I feel like if we don't keep our own emotions in check, and I don't mean shove down, I mean, really feel them and really acknowledge them, but then move towards how we actually want to feel, which is we want to be loving and, and empowered and, and positive. Um, so there's my tip. It's process your emotions before they process you. All Dan right, Siegel, 
Dan Siegel says, name it to tame it. Yeah. Mm. And I teach my kids that, you know, you name it and then you're yeah. already starting to tame the eruption. So, yeah. Nice. Instead of the happy mask. Exactly. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Biddy, let's let's hear what you got. Another one. Okay. Well, I, I you know, l love languages. Now, touch is one for some, but I want everybody actually after they've finished watching this to actually go and touch each other in whatever spot they would like, to be honest, because <laughs> touch produces arousal and comfort and support on a, you know, psychological level and a physiological level as well. So holding hands when you go on your... Uh, walk the you know 50th time you've walked the same route in the last six weeks or you know hug and kiss and daily embrace each other reminds you each other that you really are bonded you know so so when you're reigniting your relationship it's really important that you shake things up and that might be deciding to actually when he comes back in the door or you know when when she comes back from the supermarket or whatever I'm actually going to stand there and I'm going to give her a damn good, you know, real kiss. You know, the whole Seven work. seconds, right? <laughs> Seven seconds, yeah. So, it, and people really do have to shake things up. If, if it's feeling like, you know, the love has died a little bit, then you need to have some mystery and some intrigue in that mm. relationship, whether it's, you know, you pack your partner's bag and you take them on a mystery holiday somewhere and they don't know anything about it or some sort of surprise yeah. element. You know, there's roses in the bed or, I don't know, something else you find in the bed. You never know. Can you? But, um, you know, so I think that's you've got to think outside the box, think outside the square and get out of your comfort zone and really love each other. Yeah, yeah, that's a good tip. I, You know, I call that like don't save it for the bedroom, right? So like you can still be physical it, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to wait till whatever, 930 at night. You know, interesting, um, Jackie, my co-author. So she is, her and her husband honestly are like my role models of like a healthy, happy marriage. Like, so she, they often, every year they plan like a surprise getaway. So one of them would book something and the other wouldn't know. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we've only ever had like one night away, you know? She's so amazing. But in the here, she has this story and it's called Just a Tie where her friend, not her, wanted to like, you know, rev things up in the marriage front. So when the hubby came home from work, she was sitting at the dinner table wearing just a tie. There you go. Wow. There's See, that's, a, that's another that's good idea. one way to shake things up. I know yeah. you'd approve. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Vaynan for possibly more of a conservative tip. Who knows? <laughs> 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 well, it's I, I want to tag on to what Bridget said about the touch thing because my Good. tip is before you go to bed, hold hands and wait for it. Pray together. Wow. So many of you know me. I mean, my I'm, I come from a faith background, Christian faith, and so I mean, for us in terms of keeping our marriage going, it's it's rooted deep in our belief about sticking with one person for life. Uh, different people have different opinions to this, but we found that by praying together, it just puts us in a different state of mind because it takes the attention off of me and puts the attention to us and how do we connect to God and to a greater purpose and just change the attitude from what I need to what am I here to give. So that's my tip. Before you go to bed, take hands, hold hands. There's that physical touch buddy and pray together and in line with that too comes back to that old saying that don't never go to bed angry with each other you know absolutely so that all ties in with that nice yeah, i wrote in the so chat box do. pray together to stay together that's it <laughs> uh can i say something as well yeah to that? yeah my studies in India in traditional Hindu Tantra as well speak of the importance of making sure you're well aware that any kind of engagement within um, or connection in divine union with another, you, you're, you're dancing with the divine. There's an invitation there that it's not just two physical bodies, that you can call in um, a greater being, God, source, and that when you do that, sex doesn't become two bodies, friction, do it. You know, after 20 years, that will be boring, after five years maybe. And so remembering the spiritual aspect, remembering your service as a human being, remember the, the power of two together is deeply, deeply powerful. And I love how it transcends across different religions and different beliefs. 
Yeah. Spirit, soul, and body, right? Sex yeah. is right. as important as connecting spiritually. For sure. Yeah. Okay, Nikki, let's go to you for your, your next tip. Um, I know you do talk a lot about, you know, connection and intimacy as well. So yeah, what is what is another thing we can we can apply to our relationships? The one that I had in my mind was was different to the one that keeps wanting to come forward. So I've been yeah, bad luck. I've been, I've been sitting here battling. Well, the first one is that foreplay starts the minute you finish the previous session of sex, okay, or intimacy. So foreplay is not something you do to start revving up 15, 20 minutes before the big act. Foreplay is something that begins the moment you two part ways the last time you were intimate. And thinking about that and, and keeping that in mind sort of helps to remind people to to elevate the other, to make sure that there is an honor and um, and uh, and a reverence given to each other throughout the day. And when you feel heard and connected and seen by someone, you're so much more open to be able to get changed, to be able to be more in your body, to be able to receive one or to be able to give yourself to another. So this is a big one for play, right? Um, and the other one I was gonna say, am I okay to just throw in another one? You're good. I'm writing down redefining foreplay. <laughs> redefining foreplay, for sure, for sure. And I mean, actual techniques and tips and all that there is also something I teach, sort of rewriting the feminine sexuality, sex ed, right? Unlocking mysteries of the feminine, right back from my ancient Greek studying days through to Tantra. It's really helping to teach people about the female body, even because we've been, there's many myths and many sort of uh, issues that we've had to do with um, the different zones, the different levels of orgasm, the different ways to pleasure. All of these are really, really powerful uh, and really, really worth um, revisiting now that we're adults and saying goodbye to crappy um, sex education that we had when we were younger. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to take it to an, um, an FAQ because I know we've, we've done a lot of the, the bedroom stuff, which is awesome. I, I feel like some people will be sitting here thinking, and I've heard this so many times, that's great, guys. Like, I know we should have couple time. I know, I sh you know, but we've got kids, like reality wise. So I'd love you guys to anyone chime in on like, yeah, but what about the kids thing? And also, Biddy, I'd love you to chime in on this. What about when you actually, it's just not working. And you, and you, yeah. you know, you realize, like I said earlier, sometimes the best thing you can do as a couple, sometimes I think Absolutely. is walk the other way. So mm -hmm. any sort of insight on that, Brigitte, because I know some people will be, be thinking that. Well, absolutely. So um, I do a lot of coaching with people in terms of should I stay or should I go? Yeah. And I know that people, you know, the workbook is very useful. It's it's free to anyone. So I will make sure that I give you the link, Natalie, so awesome. people can, can download that. And it's it's really good because it really gives you clarity about whether you actually do want to stay in that relationship or or you want to leave. And and people have got to realize now that you know n not every relationship is going to work. People change over time. People grow, and they grow in different directions. And you know the biggest thing if in terms of if you have to get separated or divorced is actually please try and make it amicable for the sake of yourselves and in the best interests of the children. And I know how difficult that can be. You want to retain that relationship because you're, you know, particularly if you've got children, they need, they need security and they need clarity and they need, you know, they need to have a schedule and know exactly what's happening. And one of the biggest things that I want to tell everybody, because it's very easy to do, is, is if you're deciding to separate or divorce, don't forget that those children are 50% of you and 50% of your ex-partner. And if you start bad-mouthing each other, um, that is actually, in fact, bad-mouthing the children as well. So the most important thing is do not bad-mouth each other, particularly around your children. That's really important. And that is an invaluable tip, regardless of whether they're separating or together, because that can happen in every relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. Seems to be heightened, though, um, particularly at the divorce and separation stage, particularly if one person is um, who has decided to leave. The other one, I liken it to sprinting around a, um, you know, an athletics course. Is that the person who's decided to leave is sprinted off into the distance and past the finishing line where the, the one who doesn't want the relationship to end um, actually is still at the starting line. Yeah, yeah, totally different journeys. So do either of you, Nikki or Vainan, do you want to chime in on either that one or, um, you know, but yeah, but we've got kids. Like when people come in going, how can we be romantic? The kids are always around. 
Yeah, I want to I wanna maybe remind people that um, there was the saying I learned at first year university, you know, uh, your attitude is your choice. And um, maybe just to elaborate on that, I'd, I'd go as far as saying, hey, love is a choice. Mm-hmm. To love someone is a choice. And it's a choice I make regularly. So um, I guess my approach to relationship and to my marriage is the fact that I've chosen Al Ray, my wife, to love for the rest of my life. Now, that doesn't mean she doesn't frustrate me. That doesn't mean there were days that I've thought, hey, how is this even working? Those days do come in every marriage. But most people that look at us would say, hey, you've just got an amazing marriage. You guys just, you're besotted with one another, which we are. Um, But it's probably only because I've made that choice and so did she and mm. we continue to make that choice so no no judgment on on you if you've s- decided to stop making that choice and definitely like bridget said you want to keep the relationship at some level um civil so that you know your kids will you know walk away with both parents and still have some type of connection to to both of them but if you are at that stage where you have stopped making the decision to love this person then decide who do you want to be. Um, But if you're at that stage where you're just really frustrated and you don't know how you're going to get around this, then maybe the question you can ask yourself is, what do I need to do in order to love this person well? And if I did love them the way I initially loved them, what environment would that create for them to love me in return? Now, it always takes two to tango. And there are occasions when I think it's not healthy to stay in a relationship, especially when domestic violence um, is involved. But um, just maybe let's reframe the way we think Mm. about things. And instead of saying, how is this ever going to work? Ask yourself, how can I make this work? Love the reframe and the choice, the fact that it's a constant, you know, ongoing choosing. Um, Nikki, any comment on either of these things? Yeah, so, yeah, super quickly, I speak to so many women in particular who say, oh, by the end of the day, you know, I just, I just have nothing more to give. I've, I've cleaned up poo. I've put away the 10th box of toys. My, my teenagers' behavior is kind of still on my mind. I just, I just want to zone out. And the thought of having to give to my husband or having to find the energy and do that, just absolutely. I just, I'm just done. And this is something that I know I've experienced personally in my life, having three small children. And I know it's not just for women. Men too have this, whew, I'm just full. I'm, I'm now I'm now chocker, right? And I want to, to this, I want to say that there's a piece that, that doesn't serve us. And that's when we lose track of prioritizing ourselves and our own needs. That the selfless mother or the selfless parent, or the extra hardworking dad who's got to bring in the money for the ski trip that's happening at the end of the year, whatever, overtakes basic human needs. Because to hop into bed and to hold and to be held should not be a chore. To dance in pleasure and to call in the divine in whatever way you like and to explore the beauty of your body should not be something that's only for those guys and not for you. Even if you've never had it, even if you're anorgasmic, even if you're just, it's just not your thing. There is, there is, there is potential there for you to explore the ways in which you overgive and you don't leave for yourself. So I would say if you're feeling that, it's a gift. It's a big opportunity for self-inquiry. Wow, what am I purposefully? It's, it's like eating too much dinner and not leaving enough for dessert. <laughs> you know? Who does that? <laughs> yeah i think that's so good um and i you know the mother i call it motherhood martyrdom it's very common and it's not just moms but it, a lot of it is especially when they're younger but not only like you mentioned the no, teenager yeah. on the mind, it's not just like i always say you know marriage like it doesn't get easier it just gets different and i yeah. would say the same thing about business i'd say the same thing about you know parenting it's like it's it doesn't get easier it just gets different and you have to evolve and um that's one of the things I've I found is that if one person in the marriage evolves and does personal development and reflects and grows, but the other person doesn't, that's when it can can lead to a real disconnect. So I'm gonna, gonna read out a couple of comments from our viewers today. Thanks so much for joining us, you guys. Um, 
so we've got someone saying touch, you know, while watching TV, in the car, setting the table, right. eye just contact, sometimes no words, just gentleness and acknowledging the positive yeah. trait. You know, one thing I find myself doing, I'm like all over the kids, like, right? But like with hubby, I'm like, he gets less. So that's <laughs> it. Um, somebody else says, uh, great tip. This is for you, Biddy. Having divorced, I've always made sure that I was civil about my ex in front of the kids. That is awesome. That's awesome. fantastic. not easy to do. Not easy, right? No. Um, and someone else says, uh, hus husbands, oh, okay, okay. I read it wrong. I was like, what? Husbands have to beat their wives to do the washing and the cooking and the ironing. We have to understand that there are times, I think they mean get there first. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have to understand that there are times when we need to do the heavy lifting to show our wife why we appreciate her. I read this book once and they called it chore play. Right, mm. four play. Yeah, let me, so let think me about that. <laughs> four play. Yep. Um, awesome. Okay, you guys, we're going to do this round, which I've recently added to my show. It's called What's Cool About You? So if each of you could share with us, what is one thing that you've done or that your talent that you have that's cool about you? And then how can we find you online? How can people connect? Right. You want me to go first? Well, yeah. uh, no one else is going to mention this, but I was born with my fingers joined together. So um, I could be, so I've had them, I've had them separated, but I used to, I could have been a really good swimmer, like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. That is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and where can you find me? Well, you can, um, you can go to equalexes.com, um, equal, and then X is E-X-E-S.com, or you can go to my online membership program that is now $9.99 a month if you'd like to join. Um, that special finishes at the end of lockdown, and that's equalexesonline.com. Love to have you part of either of those. If you want some face-to-face, -face, well, actually Zoom coaching, obviously, at this stage, give me a call on 021-895-032, um, 021-895-032, or email me at Bridget, B-R-I, or Bridget, what do you like to call me? B-R-I-D-G-E-T-T-E -E at equalexes.com. Love to have a chat, love to help you in terms of what you're going through with your relationship, whether you're wanting to stay together, whether, whether you're needing to move on. I'm, I'm well experienced and would be absolutely happy to help anybody. I will be putting the contact details, obviously, in right. the post and in the show notes. The other thing, obviously, is during times of intensity, like we're having right now, I f do you agree, Brid Bridget, that sometimes things become really apparent? Like it's either gonna work or it's not. So some oh, people, I, I imagine, is once we get into the lower levels is they'll be like, okay, you know what? I've realized this is never gonna work. Or other people I've found have realized, actually, I've really enjoyed us just being around each other instead of ships in the night where we normally are just coming and going, dropping kids off from activities. And it's actually improved their relationship. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Well, well, I know. Well, absolutely. Either either of those scenarios will happen. Um, in China, um, there was a thirty-eight. There has been a thirty-eight percent increase in divorces and separations after self-isolation. So, um, you know, I've been busy already, even in lockdown, with people yeah. wanting to separate. So, come next week, I think it's going to be absolutely frantic. But, um, yeah. you know, it, you know, I really plead people to make sure that they've they've gone to the nth degree to try and see if they can reignite their relationship and make it work. Because I'm certainly not pro-divorce by any stretch the imagination i would love it for people to be able to reconnect and you know continue their relationship for the sake of themselves and their families but however you know unfortunately 50 percent of the population these days de facto and those who've been married end up um getting divorced or separated mm, yeah all right vena and let's go to you for what's cool about you Okay, so uh, before being very dedicated and involved in relationship coaching, uh, I had big aspirations to be a musician. Now, my wife is actually, um, she's the trained musician, so she plays the cello and I play the guitar, so we've got this bit of a rock classic vibe going. And uh, Oh, give us your people, YouTube link. Yes, yeah, some people may find a video or two uh, if they search for <laughs> Jacob's band. And... Um, there's not much up there really, but we uh, have endeavored during lockdown to say we're going to, in the future, now this is navigating life with a baby and trying to pick up that hobby, but in the future, see if we can release one cello and guitar cover song um, a month. 
So that's a, it's a bit of a big ask. We're still working through our deadline of uh, getting that video out. I've done my bit of the recording. Now it's helping uh, Al Raid do her bit with uh, taking Jonah and uh, yeah, making that happen. So that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting about us. Um, the work that, that, that I do um, uh, in, in my private capacity, not so much actually anymore, but um, I guess, um, yeah, I've decided to join forces with um, Family Life and I mean, just feel as an organization and, and work, working with the team, uh, we get to do, um, I guess, we get to reach people, I guess, in a, in a larger number. I don't always get to go as deep as I would when I'm working with people one-on-one. -on -one. So if people wanted to check us out, um, uh, our Weekend to Remember event, we usually have about three to four of them in a year, uh, two in Auckland and then two in the other uh, other areas of the country. Uh, our first half of the year have obviously have been cancelled due to COVID-19, but hopefully there will be a September conference in Auckland and we are just working at what a digital uh, offer looks like. So people can check us out at familylife.nz. Simple as that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, Nikki, let's go to you. What's cool about you? Oh, what's cool about me? Uh, last week, I had this amazing couple who have been together for 20 odd years. And they're speaking to me about, um, about problems that they believed were absolutely unfixable. And talking to me, you know, really deeply and really bravely about their intimate life and their struggles and about how they've read every book and studied everything and they're just getting nowhere. And I got a message today just saying that the perspective I gave and the, um, the sessions that we've been doing, we've been working together for, for a wee while, have completely shifted. And they are uh, super happy. They are not thinking that the, the ship is sinking anymore, that they're, that they're grounded in what is. It's not, it's not just rose-colored glasses, but they're feeling great. And I don't know if that's what's cool about me, but I, I think I played a little role. Maybe I'll take just like 2%. Celebration. Um, and I feel super happy about that because, it's easy when you've come through separation or divorce to say, ah, oh, because it did work for me. It did work for my partner. It's working for my family. To not be that, that be my rhetoric. To not that be like, come on, I'm an advocate for this. Mm. It's to see what's in front of you and what's there. Um, yeah, so that's what's cool about me recently, like in the last 24 hours. Amazing. Um, but, and I know you've also got a cool website that you're, that you're updating. So where, yeah, where can you totally. find you? In the midst of updating, but it's www.nikkir.com. Uh, and you can check that out and get in touch with me. All the coaching and, sorry, all the retreats and courses and everything were just paused. I mean, I'm meant to be in Bali right now. Oh, she's frozen. She's gone to Bali. Yeah. <laughs> Teaching a big right retreat now. there, so. <laughs> <laughs> Am I back? You're back. Yeah. You're back. You were meant to be in Bali. And I know a lot of your retreats <laughs> no were, way. like, booked out, like, like sold out. Oops. <laughs> We've done so well in yeah, my Bali retreat. retreat and our Spain. <laughs> my Spain retreat was also sold out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you, it is what it is. I was talking to Nikki yesterday. What an amazing attitude. She had all these incredible things lined up, but that, it is what it is. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sure it'll all happen and it, it'll all work amazing. Um, so all I'm going to go to uh, what's cool about me is I don't know if I can do it anymore, but I used to for a very long time be able to do 10 chin ups, which, um, you know, not a lot of people can do 10 chin ups. So I don't know, I haven't really been doing workouts in COVID, but I might be able to do like five or six right now, which apparently is, is pretty good. Um, so there you go, what's cool about me. All right, thank you so much, my beautiful guests for joining me. I'm gonna share in a moment what's coming up generally on the live stream and other things, but I wanted to, I'll just say farewell to our beautiful guests. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Awesome. So just stay there. Yeah, stay thank you. Great to be on there. <laughs> um, amazing to have you guys on the show. So cool. Thank you guys for joining us. If you're watching the live stream or you watched live, definitely come back and ask, if any questions popped up for you, you can go ahead and ask them there because my beautiful guests will come back and answer and, and I'll chime in and answer as well. Um, so here's what's coming up for me. I just launched last night the GoTo Girl Networking Night online. So when I started my business eight plus years ago, I started with 14 people in a room and a couple years later it was up to 100 people 
but I'm actually going back, going to back to who, to the, the way it was, we're going to meet online. So if you guys want to check that out, I will put the link as well. That's really around connections and collaboration and courage. The theme, of course, is up your brave because we do need to be courageous and we do need to take action right now to be resilient, not only in business, but in life too. Um, here's what's coming up on the live stream panel. So later this week, I've got the second round of the teen topic. So we're doing empowering teens and tweens and 20 something year olds with my amazing guests. We've got Terry Skeens from the US. He's uh, been doing mentoring and motivating for 20 years. We've got Amanda Betts, powerhouse in the house and also Ellie Bambury. So that'll be awesome. And then next week we're doing visibility in business, which will be incredible. I love talking about being visible. And we've also got mindset and motivation with some incredible guests. So stay tuned. If you guys want to check that out, nataliecutlerwelsh.com slash video series is where you can watch all the replays. And I will be putting up the links and things that we mention in due course. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, remember to up your brave, say what you want and make it happen. See ya. Bye. Bye.